Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. I am so excited to be here today with you guys. If you are familiar with my podcast at all, I often do series every other week. I do a brand new series that is wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. And today is the first day of the Faith Hacks series, Practical Steps to Exercise Your Faith in Business. Five quick tips to help accelerate, cultivate, and increase your faith. Now, let me break down real quick what hacks are, the way I define it. I use an acronym, hacks, helping you to access clever knowledge. So basically what it is, is I'll take something that's, you know, you you may have one perspective of it, but then I try to give you another perspective. And being clever in a sense of sometimes we have resources and things that we kind of take for granted, or we don't understand how to view them in a way that can add more value where we can bless others and we can make ourselves better. So with that, with, with faith hacks being the way that it is, it is, uh, it is designed around people who have been called to the marketplace. Um, I know many of you who are listening, you you've been given a God given vision for business and enterprise, right? Where you're like, man, this thing is bigger than me. I know I can't do it alone. I have to do it with God, you know, and it's been bothering you because you're trying to figure out, how to get certain things done, and it seems to be escaping you. You're like, man, I need money. I need this. I don't know the people. I have the idea. My heart is in it, but I just don't have any idea how to do it. So with that, um, you know, we tend to struggle with walking out God's instructions. And again, many of us, myself included, I have gone through this before. Because I knew it was God and because I did not want to displease him, it caused me to be on pause for a season for a very long season, like the children of Israel going around circle after circle over and over and over again for 40 years. I can admit to you that was me. I look back at my life and the things that I've accomplished and not accomplished, and I see that I could have done far more. And it was also very daunting because I've always been a hard worker. I've always been doing multiple projects and doing things that would add value and help people, but I could never get to my end game. And in addition to that, I realized that it had to do with my faith. You know, I mean, if if you don't have the faith that you need to see these things come to pass, then it's just not going to, you're not going to see what it is God wants you to see. You're not going to do what he wants you to do because it is a package deal. I talk about it all the time. Faith and action. You have to have faith and you have to take action with the things that you do because that's just the way it's set up. The way God set up, he wants you to make sure that you show him, hey, God, I know this is what you're telling me to do, but I'm going to show you that I'm going to study to show myself approved. I'm going to add faith and works with the vision you've given me. I'm going to position myself to see this thing comes to come to pass. And so with that, it gives you the opportunity to really um, get a chance to understand what this type of series is about. This series is about how to develop your faith. And, you know, faith by definition means complete trust or confidence in someone or something, or a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 that now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now, I'm going to do two different Bible versions of this, two more. Another version says faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. And lastly, the King James Version says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? So with that being said, you have to understand, you have to believe somewhere inside of you that even though you cannot see it with your eyes, that you can see it in your spirit first, you can see it in your mind first, you can see it in your heart first. And then you couple that with the instructions, the divine instructions. You Whatever it is that God is telling you to do, you begin to take action with that. And then you begin to see that thing come to pass. Now, 
I have based this entire series on Matthew chapter 20. And it says, he replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So even the Bible says that nothing is impossible for you if you just have a mustard seed of faith. That's why this series, this faith hack series is so important, y'all, because listen, you don't have to have a lot of faith. The problem we're struggling with right now is social media is running rampant. TV is running rampant. We are seeing people publicly post things and do things and there are other people dreading. People are getting depressed. People are becoming suicidal because people are posting a snapshot of all of the amazing stuff that they're doing and the celebrities, everybody's getting caught up in that. Not everybody, but a lot of even faith-based people, men and women of God who are who are trying to remove themselves from their old lifestyles, really trying to walk this thing out the way God intended. And they're really struggling because they're seeing everybody making all this money and they're doing this and they're doing that. And they're trying to figure out how to do it. And it's easy to forget. Hey, listen, you have to listen to the instructions that God has given you because everything that you see is not necessarily God prospering it. Let me tell you something. I love to listen to gurus. I love to listen to people that, you know, some Christians might not like to me for me to listen to, but I listen to them for business. You know, there are people that I think their hustle, I think what they do is on point and I really am able to take some nuggets from them and, and you know, introduce them into my core uh, fiber and what I'm doing for my own life and, and how I'm trying to see my dreams uh, and visions come to pass. And I think some of them help me tremendously, even with the things that God has given me to do. So with that, Here's the thing, there are laws, y'all. There are, rule, there are rules and there are laws. So God could give God could give you a vision or something to do, right? And then another person can get that vision or something to do. And that person may not be hearing from God. They're just like, oh, that looks like a good idea. I'll do it. Such and such did it, so I'll do it. Now, you, on the other hand, God gave it to you. Straight up. You had a vision. You prayed about it. Somebody told you and checked in your spirit. Whatever well, it happened to you, you got it. And you know it was God. You know it wasn't your idea. Well, let's say you and this other person have the same idea, right? Well, guess what? Theirs may come to pass and they get tons of money doing it. And yours may not come to pass and you don't get nothing doing it. So now you're frustrated saying, well, God, you played me. How is it that they got it and I didn't do it? They're not even listening to you. Okay, so here's the thing you have to remember, y'all. We have to be wise. We just, we have to be balanced and wise. We just can't be so caught up in, you know, Jesus said this, Jesus said that. Listen, listen. Pay attention to what he did instead of hitting people in the head with a Bible. In order for you people to see something Christ-like, you have to be Christ-like. And sometimes it's going to be in your actions. It's going to be in you taking your time and walking that out. And when God gives you the floor and when the time is right, you do that thing. So when you put out the Lord and you say the things of God, people can receive you. They can be receptive. People are not always going to be receptive, even if you do it in God's timing, because everything is just not meant to flow perfectly all the time. But we have to remember y'all with faith and, and, and doing things that other people might think are spooky. It, that's just what it takes. Because here's the thing, the other person, they just did the work. They just did the work. They stayed up all night. They, they did all of the paperwork. They did whatever they needed to do. And boom, they got the vision that you got and it's complete and they're getting buku money. It may not be blessed by God, but they've achieved their goal. It's the same thing with you. God is going to give you instructions. But here's the thing. If you stop along the way and you don't complete it, then you're not going to see what God is telling you to do. And also this, the person who may just be doing it and like, oh, this is something I can come up with and I can make some money. They may have different resources than you. And in your case, God is trying to give you your resources. So we have to be, com we have to be careful with comparing things and people that we see. Because if you know God gave it to you, it's a different kind of blessing. It's not going to blow up in your face. It's not going to fall apart. It's going to work out and it's going to be what it needs to be because God is all over it. The other person, they may not have the same outcome. It may be, it may be a fleeting thing. They might start something new next week. But you can't be concerned about that. That's the whole point of me saying this. Your faith has nothing to do with what the next man is doing. You have to do what the father is telling you to do. That is where your wealth is. It's not with other people. It's what it's with 
you listening to him. And then he could direct you to other people, but you're doing that based on following what he has told you to do. Now, each of my series come with a free ebook to follow along with each day. But this one is really dope because every time I do a hack series, I always have a bonus. And I'll get to that bonus in a minute, but I have that bonus um, for every day of the of the podcast. Every day I speak on this one particular bonus hack. And if you go back, you can catch up, guys. If you haven't yet, you can go hit the link below this podcast and download your Faith Hacks ebook so you can print it. I mean, well, this one, you don't necessarily have uh, anything to write in this one. You can print it, though, just to keep it if you want it. But definitely download it, save it, go through, follow through. And you can just kind of look ahead if you want to kind of get a feel for what the rest of the week is going to look like. Now, check out the hashtags for this series. Um, you can use get faith hacks, G E T faith hacks, then hashtag faith hacks and then hashtag live your authentic purpose. Okay. So again, in this series, I'm going to be addressing the five quick tips to help accelerate, cultivate, and increase your faith. Now today, guys, today is one that may appear to be like, what is she talking about? How is this a hack? Well, tip one is to use your mind. It's time to read. Okay? Now let me break this down for you. Now, people don't realize that we can do so much more in life if we read. Now, I don't mean just reading an email or reading a text, but reading, reading and reading the right stuff, the reading the things that are going to fill you up and fill your tank in a good way. I don't mean like, you know, like cheesy books and all of that. Now, like if that's your, if that's your, your deal, that's fine. No judgment over here, but we're talking about faith hacks and we're trying to teach you how to excel in your God given purpose and to live authentically. So none of those things are not, if that's what you do. Again, no judgment, but today I'm here to talk about leveling you up. So that is not a part of leveling you up. That could be for your for your uh, free time, but today we're talking about leveling up. So if that's what you do, please don't be offended by that. I'm just trying to get down to brass text because I want you to add value to what you're doing in your life. Now, first thing you're going to have to do, y'all, is create a reading list. Now, reading has several benefits that help to increase your business and your faith. Now, to my people who hate reading and those of you who are wondering, how can it help me with my faith? I want you to check this out. Reading scientifically has been proven to increase your memory, vocabulary, and your desire to write. Now, those are all things you need in business. You need to have a good memory. You need to have a good vocabulary. And you need to have a desire to write. Now, let me tell you, I'm not talking about writing a book. I'm not talking about writing a thesis or, you know, even writing extensively. But if you are a business owner, at some point, you will have to write something, okay? Now, writing has also been known to increase your analytical thinking, right? Now, that actually surprised me because I battle a lot of times with the whole analytical side of myself because sometimes it can be overbearing to my creative side. But I thought that that was really dope. But hold up. Do you know in the long term, it could also help to pre prevent Alzheimer's? That blew my mind. Okay, so with that, think about how those things I just said have to do with your faith. Let's, let's, let's particularly speak on um, your memory, your vocabulary, and your desire to write. Let's just talk about those for a minute. Okay, so let's think about your faith, okay? Faith comes by hearing. So if you don't like to read, you have to find another way to still develop your faith Still put yourself in a position to, again, get the benefits of reading, your memory, your vocabulary, and your desire to write. Well, here's the dope thing about the age we live in now. You don't have to just sit down and hold a book and feel like you're taking hours out of your life and it's boring you to death. There's such a thing called Audible. There's YouTube. There's music. There are a ton of things that encompass reading that can completely put you above the curve. Now, let me tell you how I went through a season earlier this year where I probably went through 10 books in maybe two weeks. Here's the thing. I was really, really busy working on different, uh, de developing different projects. Some things that are actually, they haven't even come out yet, but just working on things. And when I would pull up, uh, plug up my YouTube, put on my YouTube, excuse me, 
And I would begin to find the books on my book list because I told you, number one, make a book list, make a reading list. I found my book list and I started finding every one of those books that had a free audio book on YouTube. Okay. Hopped on, started listening to the audio books while I was working. And let me tell y'all something. And again, for me, I can retain the information. Some people have to just sit and pay attention to the book. I'm blessed to be able to multitask and still get the nuggets. So just listening to YouTube, y'all, I was rolling. There were times, though, when I was in my room, maybe cleaning, and I would plug up my YouTube to my flat screen, and guess what? Playing the books out loud in my room. And I'm literally pausing to write notes, literally um, remembering certain things, remembering chapter, uh, the chapters, the chapter titles, because I really was into the book. So what I'm trying to tell you is, Reading does not have to be the old school way of doing it. So again, for those of you who tripping, I want to suggest a couple of options to you so that you can, you know, try to figure out your way around it so that you can begin to develop this for yourself. And again, I am a firm believer, y'all. I'm a firm believer. Books on tape, uh, Audible, um, YouTube, whatever it is you have to do. And let me tell y'all, the way these cell phones set up, the way this YouTube, this auxiliary cord, this Bluetooth setup, there's really no excuse at this point, guys, because guess what? All you have to do is just find what you want to read, and if you don't want to stop and hold the actual book, guess what? Plug it up. Play it while you're driving. Commit to that. Say, okay, this week, Monday through Friday, whenever I make my morning commute to work and then I make my commute back, I'm not answering phone calls. And I'm not going to listen to my radio. I'm going to play this book because I need to get this knowledge. Think about it. You, li- you read a little bit. Let's say your commute is 30 minutes to an hour. You're knocking out two hours a day. You'll be done with that book in no time. You could be done by the end of the week. Most books, most, um, most, books I, most uh, audio books, I believe, maybe average, maybe five to seven hours. I'm not sure about that. You can, you can double check that. But for the most part, You can really knock those things out quickly if you just commit to doing it. And again, this begins to develop your faith because here's what happens, y'all. When you begin to retain information, you begin to read, it begins to implement things on the inside that set you up even in your subconscious mind to believe that it's going to happen. It's like you're setting yourself up to win. It really is. So, Think about something, y'all. Your mind is your most powerful tool. If the most you read is on Instagram or any form of social media, then it's time to step your game up. You don't have to be an avid reader, but you can certainly schedule times and maybe certain days of the week just to read. Start small and start with something that already intrigues you or something new that you want to learn about. If you're already a reader, then you're already ahead of the curve. Now it's time to pick up a topic that you do not like. Yes, I said do not like. Because this gives your brain a chance to stretch and shift into analytical mode. Now, the funny thing is, being analytical is actually the opposite of having faith. But the hack is this. When you let God analyze your life while you analyze the logistics of your business, you set yourself up to win because you're allowing God to lead you while you work. Y'all got that? Let me tell you that again. Being analytical is actually the opposite of having faith. But the hack is this. When you let God analyze your life while you analyze the logistics of your business, you set yourself up to win because you're allowing God to lead you while you work. Okay? So, again, I mentioned Audible. That's a wonderful uh, app that you can use to get downloaded uh, audio books. And here's another little cool tip I'm going to give you before we close out. Read album lyrics. There were a couple albums that came out this year that were really popular and people were talking about how awesome they were. I didn't listen. I still haven't listened to the material, but I read the lyrics. It was a completely different experience. This website, I believe, is genius.com. I enjoy it. I find lyrics on there. And there's some things like you really get to understand the depth of where people are coming from. Because, again, even myself being a songwriter, I really get the value of of the words because I love the beat. The beat pulls me in, but it. I actually had a different respect for some of the things, uh, well, some for some of the projects that I read about because 
it wasn't drowned out by the music and it was refreshing just to read the lyrics. I had a completely different perspective um, and I was able to kind of stretch from it. Again, that's just a little cool tip. And another one is to join a book club. That might be a little old school to some people. There are even virtual book clubs. You know, I know everybody's busy and everybody's just moving around a lot, but you could actually create a book club for yourself if you want. You don't have to do it every week. You can do it once a month if you want. But it's just something to try to implement that stretching of your mind so that it can develop your faith. Now, each tip each day comes with a scripture, and I'm going to say the tip at the end of each day. So here we are. This scripture today is Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And I thought that was perfect for reading. God has called many people to write books and to to put out knowledge for us to uh, receive his best. And for us to build our faith. Because you know what happens a lot of times too? We'll read somebody else's story and then we get faith to do it for ourselves. So that is tip number one on the first day of the Faith Hack series. And you know I told you I will give you a bonus tip. And again, I'm not going to go in depth on this one. You have to get the ebook to get the whole tea on this one. But the bonus tip every day is to build your faith by getting instructions from the Word of God. This series was designed for those of you who are really trying to walk with God and you're trying to do your stuff decent and in order. Maybe you didn't do that before. Maybe you had different desires. And again, I'm not trying to beat you in the head, you know, beat beat anybody in the head about being a Christian or not being a Christian. That's not what I'm here for. I know for me as a Christian woman, I'm called to bring souls to Christ. And that's something that I do. But I also know that we are to love all people. And I know that people should not feel judgment and they should not feel any kind of way, uh, when we are expressing who we are, because everybody's not going to like us. It is not to be conformative. It is not for us to do what other people say, and it's not to quote unquote dance to make the world happy. But I have to tell you what works for me. And and these, these series, I know I, I can do these series because this is my life. I'm not selling you any wooded nickels. I'm not guessing. This is my life. And so I know that this is what has worked for me. So what I would like to share with you is this. If you do not have it, get the YouVersion Bible app. And it, and it has the logo, read, listen, watch, share. Again, read was first. Still like the, uh, the, the tip for today. So with that, it's Romans 10 and 16. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So again, substitute the times you listen to it. Maybe when you're working out one day, don't play your music. Maybe play your Psalms or your Proverbs or play the scriptures that God drops in your heart. And you can do that while you're working out. Maybe you can do it when you're in transit, when you're going from this place to that place. Maybe when you go to the bathroom, you know, everybody bring their phone with them when they go to the bathroom these days. Play it in your bathroom. Maybe put, play it while you're in the shower. You can still hear it. You can sit your phone next, next to the sink while you're washing dishes. There's always an option. But we want to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We want to gain wisdom. We want to understand what we can do to match the natural and the supernatural so that we can see our dreams, goals, these multi-million dollar, billion dollar ideas come to pass. Because I know many of you have them. Many of you have a dream to have a nonprofit. Many of you have a dream to really, really put yourself out there and, and, and create products for people or teach people how to create products. So with that being said, you just want to make sure that you are setting yourself up to win and you are putting yourself in a position to prosper. So that is day one. Use your mind. It's time to read. And tomorrow, join me for number two. Preparation builds confidence and faith. So again, for the rest of the week, in addition to tomorrow being about preparation, you can just stay tuned the whole week because I'll talk about discipline. I'll talk about reinventing yourself. And i also tell you about how you can stop sleeping on the things that you already have to get you to the next level. Guys, if you like it, make sure that you share, you subscribe, and you download this ebook and you pass it on. So God bless you. I will be back here with you tomorrow for day two. I am Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at imwiredtoinspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five-star rating on iTunes. 
For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist.life or I'm wired to inspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.